Hello everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. My name is Matia Kiapa. I hope you're doing well. For those of you who are not familiar with this series, what I'm gonna do throughout the video is making variations using the same melody and reorchestrating it. What is up everybody? Welcome back. As always, I didn't have any specific theme in mind, but along the way I did end up either ripping myself off famous composers or ripping off film composers who ripped off romantic composers which is funny because everything I've ever done in the past was entirely original and not at all derivative yeah sure it was so let's make that the theme for today's episode shall we right so sit back relax and enjoy So, as always, I decided to start with a simple one. We have covered some string writing in the past, but nothing quite like this. And this is actually amongst one of my favorite things to write. Nowadays, we hear a lot of open chord voicings and high violins playing in octaves, but this is a different type of writing. The chords here are very dense and I'm showing the section in its lower register and oftentimes making use of the open strings because of that. In terms of harmony, key part of this sound is using chords extensions to build up tension and using close intervals between different instruments. The melody is on violin one, being the middle voice of a three-part harmony enveloped by violin two playing the music. Similarly, we have violas and cellos playing divisi as well, and also crossing the lowest and highest voices. Since we're skipping a tone on cellos, if we play them together with the basses, we basically get some open chords, voicings, not unlike more conventional type of music. So does it have to be done that way? Absolutely not. It's just something to try for a different kind of sound. To my ears, these voicings have an interesting stereo spread because of all the crossings happening. And even if this makes them sound quite unstable, it's an aesthetic I personally find quite appealing. My advice though would be to not be too religious about it, you know? I certainly wasn't in the example I just played for you. All right, let's take a listen to everything together one more time and then we'll move on to something new. I think quite possibly everyone knows what this is. I wanted to feature it here because it shares some characteristics with number 20, but having an entirely different vibe, the whole music of course assumes a different meaning. Danny Elfman said in an interview that when he was hired to write the theme for The Simpsons, the visuals reminded him of the Flintstones, and because of that he was inspired to write something retro. What he did in the end though is something much more clever than that. His orchestration of course is very much reminiscent of the 40s and the 50s with pizzicato strings and saxes and lots of woodwind runs and brass playing with mutes and so on, but the music itself has nothing to do with it really being wacky and strange and that is why it fits so well with the vibe of the show. So let's now take a look at my version which is really quite similar. We have a short introduction with a choir and a string tremolo playing a B flat augmented resolving into a C major add six. Harp is doing glissandos up and down a C Lydian dominant scale, but the tuning here skips the notes A and G by repeating the notes F sharp 
and B flat as a G flat and A sharp. This is basically giving me a part Holton scale, which in old movies used to be the sound for flashbacks and dream sequences and stuff like that. It seemed to, be. to add to this texture, we have a slow trio on French horns, a cymbal as well, and basses and cellos in octaves. The introduction swells into some growls and flatter tongues on uh, muted brass and woodwinds. Like we briefly mentioned before, we have some pizzicato strings accompanying the melody. And it's a very simple progression made of the same two chords that we had in the introduction. So we have a C at 6 and a B flat augmented. The melody is split in two parts. The first time it comes with saxes, clarinet, and flutes playing in three octaves. And on the second time, it's a thick harmony with muted brass and bassoons. Percussion is really simple here. We only really have a few accents on tambourines and bass drum. And finally, to transition from one section to the other, we have some wacky woodwind runs doubled by xylophone that makes it sound cartoonish and almost comical. Right, let's take it from the top. So this example was inspired by a piece that I did not know and was suggested by one of my patrons, David. The goal here was to try and capture a Spanish Latin kind of vibe. The harmony I'm using here is kind of generic and, you know, a little bit cliche, but being our melody what it is, there really isn't much that we can do about this. Similarly to the previous example, we still have pizzicato strings providing the accompaniment for the melody. The melody can be split in two. Again, we hear first the French horns and then some muted trumpets playing close triads in a mariachi band kind of fashion. We have some doublings on woodwinds, trombones and percussion, mostly for clarity. We've talked about this like a million times. Whenever I play the melody in close harmony, I oftentimes like to double the top line or the most important line with something else just to make sure that it stands out from the rest. There are a couple of really minor fillers and transitioning parts. We hear those firstly played on muted trumpets, trombones and tuba, and then bassoons and clarinets. And of course, since we are doing a Latin sounding example, we have to have acoustic guitar and tambourine. Finally, right at the end, we have a little bit of timpani and a woodwind run. Let's have a listen to everything together.
The following four examples are all very different from each other, but they have one thing in common. So try to keep that in mind and see if you can spot what that is. The main difference between this example and everything I've done so far, I think is probably that I've flipped the two halves of the melody with the B becoming now the main body. For the harmony, I'm basically just using major chords at, at a very fast pace for a playful, youthful kind of vibe. The example can be broken into three main parts. We have runs, stabs, and a melody. Runs are taken by violin one. What they do is basically either outlining the chords or running up major scales that change in a very quick succession. You could notate this with a double F dynamic mark but this would still remain a rather soft kind of orchestration because of the nature of the parts. So if we wanted to do stabs like we mentioned, we would have to balance them accordingly. Brass and percussion would pretty much overpower all the other parts. And since we are gonna be using the woodwinds for the melody, the only option left here is basically using the rest of the strings. Just like the previous example, the melody can be broken into two parts. We first have all the woodwinds and violin two and violas playing pizzicato two octaves apart, adding an extra percussive layer. Then we have an interesting, slightly less conventional combination of instruments with clarinet, piccolo and glock two octaves apart and violas and violin two pits. The last part to look at is the trumpets. The function of this one is complementing the melody really. And the different rhythm on bar two and four simply makes for a slightly better transition with the violin part coming right before it. So there's quite a few different things in this one and I think it can be quite confusing. So let's start with a reduced version of it first. So as you heard from the piano reduced version, uh, original melody kind of assumes a secondary importance here. I also kind of skipped the first half of it, even if I'm still trying to suggest it with the, you know, with the opening interval and a few of the notes in the part. The focus really goes on violin one, violin two, and violas, all playing together in the very same octave, making for a very, very strong statement. We have some really important stuff happening in the woodwinds and percussion. I often talked about to not try and burn out all the instruments at once, uh, even for a short example like this, because that will allow you to use orchestration to better serve the music and not only as a form of development for the piece you're writing. Some notes are more important than others and of course we could write, you know, articulation markings and hairpins and accents and all that, but why would we? It would just make an already difficult part a lot harder to play. So what we do instead is we use orchestration to achieve that effect, even if that means that some of the instruments would have to drop out for a beat or two. I think it's gonna make more sense if I play each single part and then we'll put them together to see what they bring to the table.
And following the same logic, we have the rest of percussion and brass accenting the strongest beat and cellos and bassoons for more subtle nuances. French horns are quite decorative here and to be entirely honest with you, I've only really used them to feature a snippet of our original melody, but we could very easily take them away. So I'll play that first and then we'll listen to the whole orchestra together. This is my not so tasteful take on John Williams ripping off Tchaikovsky. So what I've done here is a bit of a weird hybrid version of the two, taking things I like the most about both of them, but also introducing new things and readapting it. part of the melody is hidden in the orchestral stops happening in the background. It's a thick texture of low strings, brass and percussion. While the B part is taken by French horns, woodwinds and tubular bells, the stabs we just listened to continue but now quieter, with percussion dropping out, making space for this new colour. The main idea is now on Glock, violins and violas, two octaves apart. Woods are the softer section and often in a more bombastic contexts like this are reserved for doublings. They get a different treatment from the previous example because the whole spectrum is now occupied by the rest of the instruments playing in powerful ranges and with very high dynamics. You'll see that when I put them together with the strings, they kind of get lost, except for the piccolo, of course, which has the highest notes, and because of that, it's also the only instrument that gets the special treatment we have been talking about. So the next one might be a little bit less relevant, so please don't laugh, I had a ton of fun making this. For this I was quite clearly going for a piratey Irish jig kind of thing. The orchestration sounds busy here, but there are actually very few things going on. The main accompaniment is on acoustic guitar and ukulele. But also on solo double bass and cello. The main idea is on solo violin, a second acoustic guitar and accordion. And the original melodic idea is now purposed in the form of an embellishment on a penny whistle. And a couple of minor things here. 
um, a tambourine on beat 2 and 4 and a group of 3 recorders on the second half. So some time ago I said these last four examples would have like a common thread. Did you spot what it was? It's really, really simple. They were all built around one main rhythmic motor for which I've used violin on all of them. The main melody kind of became secondary. Maybe that was less the case for 74. Also, I've reused some kind of variation of this pattern in 74, 75 and 76, pretty much in the same places. Cool, so I'll play that last one again and then let's move on to something entirely different. Right, so let's pretend I did not play Bach after an Irish jig for a second. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because uh, quite honestly is specific to a genre that I don't pretend to be an expert on. Also, even if I were, uh, I don't think we can teach Baroque harmony and counterpoint in like two minutes. Still though, uh, what I wanted to show you guys with this one was mainly how you can achieve a big sound with very few instruments. It's a very, very different type of string writing from the very first example we covered today. Much more contrapuntal, though, as I mentioned, I know very little about this, so I played it very safe, basically just letting the instruments finish each other's phrases and or playing in the gaps. I'm just going to play for you each part in relation to the bass, and then we'll put them all together and we move on to the next example. simple one this basically consists in a couple of different textures layered together to get these bright lydium vibes we are starting with violins playing measured tremolos uh, violas playing some major second trios and french horns playing eights on top of that we have flutes and oboes harmonized in thirds and moving in half-step intervals while clarinets are holding a pedal tone. The melody is now on cellos and bassoons. 
not much more to say about this one. Uh, I think it's quite straightforward, really. So let's play one more time and then we'll have a look at the last one. ever get to this point but I kind of promised myself that if we ever got to number 80 I would do like a cheesy 80s version of it and boy wasn't that fun we got the legendary Yamaha the X7 on the electric piano patch We got electric guitars played with a wah-wah pedal. Is this beautiful D'Angelico semi hollow body guitar going through a box AC15 amp? Isn't this juicy? got a jazz bass and drums vibing all over. And last but not least we've got a sexy saxophone baked in some lo-fi goodness. Since very few people uh, ever get to dis witness my descent into madness for the last example. So I kind of feel entitled to have a little bit of fun. I hope you can forgive me for that. I'm aware this particular one was a little bit out there maybe. But still let me know if you enjoyed it or if you want me to try more adventurous stuff like this. Guys, this content truly takes an enormous amount of time to create. And while I enjoy making it as much as you do watching it, probably, probably more actually if you feel like supporting free education like this please do consider becoming a patron what you get in return is the project files and score reductions for all the episodes including this one and a ton more stuff man i really do hate doing these outros you know you know what to do right so like comment subscribe thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye the melody is on violin one being the middle voice of a third part harmony of a three-part harmony. The melody... <laughs> Come on, it's not that funny. Woodwind run. Woodwind... <laughs> Wood... Woodwind... 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 Woodwind run. And finally, right at the end, we have a little bit of timpani and a woodwind run. <laughs> What the fuck? I guess it's sunny now. Again, come on, I just wanna finish the video, man. <laughs>